On the morning of November 17, multi-role F-16 fighters of the Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine actively participated in repelling a large-scale combined air attack carried out by Russian troops. In total, around 120 missiles and 90 drones were launched. The Russian Defense Ministry reported that it had hit all its targets, saying that its attack was on essential energy infrastructure supporting the Ukrainian military-industrial complex. Russian terrorists once again want to scare us with cold and lack of light, was how President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky put it. As reported by Volodymyr Zelensky, Ukrainian pilots in F-16s shot down about 10 air targets. Our F-16 pilots shot down about 10 air targets, Zelensky said, emphasizing the important role of American fighters in protecting the country's airspace. The information was also confirmed by one of the largest Ukrainian telegram channels, Mikolai Vanek, noting the positive impact of the F-16 on the course of military operations. While all the data on hits and shootdowns is being collected, I can only say one thing, the FKs showed themselves to be very strong, a ray of positivity in all this nonsense, the channel administrator wrote. According to preliminary data, Russian troops used a wide range of weapons, including air, land and sea-based missiles, as well as Shahid-type attack drones. In total, the Ukrainian armed forces radiotechnical troops recorded 210 enemy air targets, including 120 missiles and 90 UAVs. The active use of F-16s has demonstrated their high efficiency in conditions of combined attacks. Ukrainian military analysts emphasize that the presence of these fighters allows for a significant strengthening of the country's air defense, especially in the fight against cruise missiles and kamikaze drones. Russia's latest massive attack, despite its scale and the use of various types of weapons, was successfully repelled thanks to the coordinated work of the air defense and the new capabilities provided to Ukrainian pilots on the F-16. The introduction of F-16s into combat operations confirms their importance in the defense of Ukraine and underscores the importance of ongoing military assistance from Western allies. Ukrainian officials fear the most recent strike could signal another concerted Russian attempt to deplete the power grid as winter arrives. Having already endured two and a half bitter winters since Russia's full-scale invasion in February 2022, Ukrainians are bracing themselves for another. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un renewed his call for a limitless expansion of his military nuclear program to counter U.S.-led threats in comments reported Monday that were his first direct criticism toward Washington since Donald Trump's win in the U.S. presidential election. At a conference with Army officials on Friday, Kim condemned the United States for updating its nuclear deterrence strategies with South Korea and solidifying three-way military cooperation involving Japan which he portrayed as an Asian NATO that was escalating tensions and instability in the region. Kim also criticized the United States over its support of Ukraine against a prolonged Russian invasion. He insisted that Washington and its Western allies were using Ukraine as their shock troops to wage a war against Moscow and expand the scope of U.S. military influence, the North's official Korean Central News Agency said. Kim has prioritized his country's ties to Russia in recent months, embracing the idea of a new Cold War, and displaying a united front in Russian President Vladimir Putin's broader conflicts with the West. He has used Russia's war on Ukraine as a distraction to accelerate the development of his nuclear-armed military, which now has various nuclear-capable systems targeting South Korea and intercontinental ballistic missiles that can potentially reach the U.S. mainland. Kim has yet to directly acknowledge that he has been providing military equipment and troops to Russia to support its war against Ukraine and the KCNA's report didn't mention whether Kim made any comments toward Trump, whose election win has yet to be reported in the North state media. Kim met Trump three times in 2018 and 2019 in Trump's first presidency, but their diplomacy quickly collapsed over disagreements in exchanging the release of U.S.-led sanctions and North Korean steps to wind down its nuclear and missile program. North Korea has since suspended any meaningful talks with Washington and Seoul as Kim ramped up his testing activity, and military demonstrations in the face of what he portrayed as gangster-like U.S. threats. There's concern in Seoul that Kim in exchange for his military support of Russia would receive Russian technology in return to further develop his arsenal. 
Trump's election win has touched off speculation about a resumption of a summit-driven diplomacy with Kim, which was described by critics as a bromance. But some experts say a quick return to 2018 is highly unlikely, as too much has changed about the regional security situation and broader geopolitics since then. While the North Korean nuclear problem was relatively an independent issue during Trump's first term, it is now connected with broader challenges created by Russia's war on Ukraine and further complicated by weakened sanctions enforcement against Pyongyang, Huang Ildo, a professor at South Korea's National Diplomatic Academy, wrote in a study last week.